Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Generation Next number three, cover dated May 1995. The cover is by Chris Pachalo, inked by Mark Buckingham. It is an interesting design, kind of quirky, which is what one would expect of Chris Pachalo um, in this era and even up to the present. And it features Mondo taking out this uh, security guard at Apocalypse's Seattle Paracore facility. The colouring is a little bit dark and it does make it a little bit hard to figure out what's going on here. So it's not one that exactly makes sense um, in the distance on a comic shelf or rack, but I do like it. Let's open this one up to the first page. And we've got a splash page here to begin. And what's going on in Generation Next is the team is on a mission to rescue Ileana Rasputin from this Seattle Paracor facility to find her and rescue her because Magneto has determined that she, is, she may have latent uh, time traveling powers and he wants to use her in order to change the fate of the world. So here we have the team already inside the uh, facility. We've got Skin here and Chamber and Skin is saying to Chamber Amigo, I think it's safe to say this plan looked a lot better on paper. No, and Chamber responds, psionically, bit of an understatement if you ask me. Title of the story is It Only Hurts When I Sing. The creators, Lobdell and Bachalo, so Scott Lobdell, writer and Chris Bachalo pencils, inks by Mark Buckingham, letters by Richard Starkings and Comic Craft, and colors by Steve Bachalato and his digital computer coloring um, operation, Electric Crayon. So I really like the work on this page and I like the little detail of the uh, rat there on the pipe as well. And let's turn to the next couple of pages, which is a lovely double uh, page spread where we get a good look at the uh, facility. And um, it, is a, it is a labor camp uh, where flat scans or uh, basic humans with no mutant powers are being used to help build this uh, facility that powers Apocalypse's um, America. So this creature here that wouldn't be out of uh, place in the Lord of the Rings and indeed when I was looking at this earlier I got the uh, I was reminded of Saruman's um, Isengard. Now of course the comic is uh, written and drawn years before the Peter Jackson's movie but um, even just from Lord of the Rings like this very much reminds me of Saruman's operation there at Isengard and uh, so we have this huge beast here with two heads saying to the humans move along flat scans we got as a mountain to hollow and then the other head comically saying what he said so chris Bacciallo enjoying himself with the creature designs here the monster designs but a lot of work on this double page spread and even in terms of the rendering of the uh, kind of hydraulic equipment here and also the design of the pit and the use here by Mark Buckingham of uh, white media for ink, uh, for delineating those fence posts over here um, in the dark and the like the cranes and everything, all the details, it's really, really well done. And he has a bit of fun with the guards as well. They all have tattoos or they're smoking cigars, uh, which kind of fits the mood of their... Uh, their unconcern, their lack of compassion for the humans who were uh, laboring and sweating there in very poor conditions. <clears throat> so, uh, Skin is the first person narrator of this particular issue and he is uh, spying here this guard on the lookout tower who has seen an untoward exchange between two humans. So the woman here says, Oh, Papa, I couldn't. And he says, please, child. And just look at this little detail. He's got a slit on his forehead there. And the eye opens up. He's got a third eye. Um, and um, he shouts out, violation, violation. Inter flat scan, fraternizing is strictly forbidden. And so he sends out some kind of blast. We don't get an explanation of exactly what it is. And the father is um, killed. So skin is uh or sorry not skin but rather chamber is really taken aback and he says there he killed the old salt and then the guard says so girl was it worth it and what was the father giving her he was giving her food from their last meal three days ago so they're really being maltreated at this um, facility this uh, labor camp and so she acts <clears throat> reacts angrily and naturally enough throws a stone at him calls him a gene freak hits him in the head and next of all 
he lashes out with her at her with his mutant power and sends her tumbling over the side of uh, the cliff into the pit and then she dies so good storytelling on this page we're going to get a reaction here from chamber who is utterly uh, distraught at what's happened and his anger is building and skin uh, t uh, tells him to be quiet he says no way we're going to win this fight i'll kill you before I let you sacrifice our lives on account of your fragile English sensibility. And then this other, um, what would you call him, supervisor comes along, he says, is there a problem? There isn't. And uh, Skin concludes, he says, who said anything about getting away with anything? That is the guards out there. But when we take a stand, it's gonna be one we can win, amigo, he says to Chambers. So Skin there, um, less of an emotional type than he is, in the regular reality, he's more of a, he's more confident, um, cooler, uh, thinking character than he is in the regular reality. And he's got much more control over his powers as well. And he's more um, accommodated to those powers too. This is an interesting layout here. We've got 12 panels on the page and uh, we have a scene in one here. So I really like this, this panel layout complementing the action in this particular scene. So we start with the establishing shot on the watchtower, this guy out on his balcony. He's the guy who killed the woman and her father um, and he's getting complimented over there by his colleague. Next of all, the balcony comes away from the wall of the watchtower. He falls over and like that panel, everything in silhouette, he grabs onto the railing there thinks he can pull himself up. I love the little details that they're wearing flip-flops as well in uh, Bachala's uh, designs for these characters. But the wall has come to life and it's Mondo. And he says, when the guy thinks he can pull himself up, he says, you can't, can't, nope. And then he falls right off into the pit as well. And that's nice. That's a nice panel with the sound effect of a scream and also the um, inverted silhouette of the figure falling into the pit. Mondo there grinning. Um, from the wall saying next lifetime don't kill innocents trust Mondo it's bad karma as he gets absorbed back in to the bricks of the watchtower as I said that is a really nice scene 12 panels start to finish start with the watchtower bookend it with the watchtower again really really well done uh, that particular page and we continue on with the story we pick up with Paige and Vincente they are masquerading as this character Quietus um, who's one of the big wigs at the facility. That's a great anchor image of him there. Um, as I said, look, all the villains are smoking cigars um, in this particular issue. Um, and all the little bric-a-brac as well, like the nail clippers there, uh, the crayon, the matches. Uh, Bachala really enjoys that. And now keep an eye on Quietus' uh, smiley pin as well. So it kind of changes expression depending on what's going on in the story too. So this old woman is a secretary and um, she uh, basically, uh, he's, he calls her in in relation to the commotion outside. So that's the whole business of what's been going on with that, um, that scene that we've just gone through. And she says she'll check it out. And then, then we get the reveal, of course, that uh, this is not Quietus, rather it is Omnimorph Page Guthrie. Uh, who is uh, who has morphed herself into his head and hands, and then the whole suit has been bulked out by Vincente. So we see them here. He comes out of the suit, and then she's left with uh, just her own body inside that suit. So they have a little talk there about the business of trying to track down Ileana, and um, that's what's going on there. Again, more of this bric-a-brac in Aquitas's office, personnel department. Uh, spray canned on the side of the table. This is really kind of lived in, grimy uh, world uh, that is uh, created here in Bachalo's drawings <clears throat> for this particular facility. It's hardly what you call high tech. And then there's a visitor and it's this chap, of course, it's Sugar Man. We didn't get a full look at him in the previous issue. He showed up, but he was in deep silhouette. So now we get a good look at him there with his mallet and look at it, it's covered in blood as well. He's got another one of those smiley uh, uh, badges on his, um, uh, on his, what would we call this uh, here? This uh, belt uh, strap, kind of like a suspenders uh, strap holding up his uh, pants there. And he grabs the woman. This is really funny cartooning from Bachalo as well. So she's on the phone there. And um, he's basically says, 
named Sugar Man. Um, your boss, Quietus's boss, uh, fact, I'm in charge of this whole operation, he says. She was uh, keeping him out of the office and she responds, oh, you're that Sugar Man. Sorry, can't see a thing with these uh, old glasses, Mr. Sugar Man, sir. So then he's got this disgusting habit of licking um, people. So he, he, his tongue uh, comes out of his mouth there and slurps on the side of her face and she has to be excused, anyone would. And so off he goes. And now Paige and Vincente are out of, uh, are out of Quietus's suit. So Sugar Man comes sniffing around. He's got this great sense of smell as well. This is another great page here. Um, great storytelling from Bacallo. So he's uh, sniffing and tasting everything. He's got his suspicions. There's a shower curtain there. He rips back the curtains, or well, it's leading to a bathroom rather, and there's the shower. And then it is, we see above uh, the, uh, what would we call it? Like the, the, the sliding doors of the shower. We see the head there of Quietus. And so he's in a little bit of chit chat there with um, Sugar Man. And Sugar Man basically gets to the point of his whole visit to the office, which was about there might be a break in because Shadow King noticed someone sci surfing their files. So he's looking for Quietus to help out in searching around us to uh, whether they've been infiltrated or whether there's been a break in at the facility. And then we get a look into the shower, and this is what's been going on. So the the pair have been uh, play acting there and look at Vincente, he's ready there with a, with a gun aimed out the door should they be uh, rumbled in the shower. That's a really great image there of Sugar Man looking right up his nose and into his disgusting maw. So off he goes and Paige says here to Vincente, Vincente you know how Jono is the only man I ever loved. And he says, yes, the whole reason you've been a bobtailed redhead for the past year, Paige. That's interesting characterization that she's changed her look with her Omnimorph powers in order to be more appealing to Jonathan Starsmore. And then she's got this kind of like, um, what we say, like this uh, um, much more assertive side to her character in the Age of Apocalypse reality. So she says to uh, Vincente here, because I'm scared and Chamber ain't here, I'm not real comfortable with. Um, sorry, he says to her, and then she just smooches him in the shower. Ooh, a bit different from the character, as I said, in the Age of Apocalypse reality. Um, and then, this is a great page here, with the outside of the um, facility, this massive tunnel, and uh, the drawbridge here, wooden drawbridge as well. Very, very uh, uh, eye-catching work here by Bachala rendering uh, the look of this place and here in the sun as these two uh, porters are chatting away one of them feels sorry for the uh, human inmates of the labor camp and the other one doesn't feel anything for them and then as the smoke rises from his cigar uh, here we see in the sun the intangible forms of kitty pride and colossus as they alight down onto uh, the entrance point of the facility so we've got Skin's narration here about the pair of them. And um, Kate Kitty asks Colossus, what do we do now? So Colossus is the leader of Generation Next. And he says, we wait for a signal. We go inside, we come out with the Ileana. So that's it, that's the whole plan. Let's continue with the story then. We um, have a scene set inside below. It turns out to be 1.6 miles down. Um, Ileana, this is Ileana here. So they're working away, clearing away uh, rocks and stones. And she asked this old woman, May, tell me again about the sunlight. And my um, idea was that this might be um, Aunt May. So Peter Parker's aunt, Aunt May. Um, it's There's nothing else to indicate that except that she's an old woman and her name is May. Um, but that's my little guess. Tell me what you think about that in the comments of the video. So she says here, not much to say, warm light, gone to us forever, but hush now, Ileana, work, work will set us free. And a little reference there, a little uh, grim reference to the motto over the gates of Auschwitz, Arbeit macht frei, work will set you free. So, you know, it simply doesn't um, in these kinds of contexts. Then we've got this little girl here, she's handed the rock and she's throwing it down into the pit. And this guy comes up behind her and he says, Sup, wife, you on your lunch hour or something? Um, no, sir, she says. 
She looks a b little bit like, but she's a bit too young to be, um, uh, uh, who was it again? Um, my mind is going blank just for a second. Yeah, Jubilee, Jubilation Lee. She's got that look about her, but it could just be the way that Bachala is drawing her. So anyway, the guy just flies around the corner. Yeah, yeah, he says back to work. He shoves her and she falls over the side because she's so weak. She's unable to withstand that shove. And then Mondo grabs her. That's a great anchor image of Mondo there saying, uh, poor girl, not even strong enough to scream. No need to scream now, girl. Mondo has you. So he grabs her there and um, he says to her, no, she says to him, you're a mutant, aren't you? Yes, but you saved me. I thought mutants only kill people. Okay, so she can't be uh, Jubilee because um, she's got no mutant powers herself, or at least she doesn't believe she does. So Mondo says, <clears throat> bad mutants, yes, but Mondo's good. So she's grateful. Meanwhile now, uh, the two lads, Skin and Chamber, are uh, take out one of the guards and they uh, do that in order to get the keys from him. So they're on the trail of uh, Ileana, of course. There's a, uh, Jonathan gets tapped on the shoulder there. Who is it that's come up behind him? Well, it's Quietus, except, of course, <clears throat> it's Paige and Vincente. So, as they're just about to confer someone comes up behind uh, Paige and Vincente and it turns out here to be, um, well, we, we recognize him by virtue of the uh, speech bubble. It is Sugar Man. So then there's a scene switch back out to uh, the entrance to the facility. We've got this character. We haven't seen her since the first issue of Generation Next. No, at all. She's their um, artificially intelligent computer system, but she may be the Age of Apocalypse version of Monet Saint Croix as well. And so she gives them information on Ileana's location. She says in the plus column, Mondo would appear to be scant yards away from rescue designate Ileana Rasputin, although they're still 1.6 miles underground, so they don't have to get out of there. And she says, on the other side of the rainbow, Skin and Chamber and Husk and Vincente are, I guess, cornered would be the best word. Recommendation, the kids could really use a hand down there, teacher and teachers, big time. So that is the rescue clarion for Kitty and Colossus. But Colossus here, this grimmer version of him in the Age of Apocalypse reality, is not on board and doesn't agree to a rescue for the... Uh, generation next kids he says the students understood the risk when they took this assignment our only priority is securing my sister for the fate of the world nothing else is important kitty doesn't have a reply to that so then we switch back to the cornered kids sugar man here we've got all this array of monstrous thuggish figures behind him including this weird little guy as well and um, frankenstein's monster back there too so Bachala having fun with the art and Sugar Man says to whom he thinks is Quietus, or does he have a suspicion otherwise? I think since you found him, you should have the honor. Kill them for yourself. And um, so here we go. Pulls a gun on Jonathan, and uh, Sugar Man makes the point. Why use the gun instead of your mutation? So Quietus says, uh, why waste my power in those two? And Paige thinks that, and I have no idea what power Quietus even has. And we don't, yeah, none of us have that idea because it wasn't made plain in the previous issue. So Mondo here spies Ileana and he uh, grabs her and promises the girl that he rescued earlier that he'll come back for her. And then um, May here says, you're on your own child. Maybe you'll see the sunlight after all. Is that Aunt May? Possibly. And then <clears throat> we're coming towards the end of the story. So, um, Know-It-All relays the fact that Mondo has secured Ileana, but the more he uses his transmutation power, the greater the risk he'll digest her completely. So time is of the essence. So Colossus and Kitty go intangible and right into the core of the facility. So they're on their way down. And in Skin's narration, he says, I can tell when the backup posse is on the way. Only thing I can tell is if they'll be on time. So here we go. Um, Sugar Man's got Chamber by the, by the lapels. And Chamber says, for I die, Governor. And he spits in his eye. 
here's a little something for you to remember generation x next and this is disgusting the guy sugar man licks that uh phlegm off his um off his face <laughs> and he says not as sweet as i'm used to here's this weird little gremlin creature as well great grin on this uh face and um sugar man says to quietus you know he thinks it's quietus he says execute the prisoner so the gun is pulled and the shot is fired but who was it aimed at chamber or sugar man well you know take a guess so next issue of vengeance and sacrifices is the final issue of generation next i do hope that you enjoyed this review and commentary on generation next and number three if you did please like the video on youtube if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this